Hello, this is Kate McKinnon with the Contemporary Geometric Beadwork Project. I'm here to walk you through a couple of different kaleidocycle joins. What is a kaleidocycle, you may ask? Well, it's a beautiful thing. It's a linkage, it's a ring, it's a net of triangles. This right here is a kaleidocycle. This was made by Claudia Firthner from Austria. And this is a very simple cycle. It's just uniform on each face. It's the same when you turn it backwards and forwards, but it's a beautiful engineering model. And you can see, if you look carefully at this cycle, that it's got hinges. Some of us like to do our hinges with clear beads. Some of us like to do them with round beads. You can see that Claudia has used clear gold round beads here to join these hinged sections of her cycle, and also to join the 24 individual triangles together to make these tetrahedra. Now, it looks complicated when you look at it like this, and it may be difficult to imagine how to begin joining, but I'd like to show you several good ways to do it. This right here is an assortment of six triangles. It's the fourth face to the kaleidocycle I'm assembling up in this pretty little quilt right there. These are the extra two triangles to go here and here, and then I'll be wanting to join this hex over to the quilt I've got going on the left. Now, one thing I want to point out is that, of course, our beadwork has two different sides, front and back, when they're on these little mats like this. And if you suddenly think, oh no, I've done my pattern wrong. I've got black next to black and it was supposed to be red. Well, you know what? Maybe you just forgot to turn it over. So don't sweat the small stuff like that. Uh, most things are going to actually work out well in this cycle if you follow the basic geometry. So this is what I'm calling a hybrid join. It's a beautiful little net. It's like a little quilt made of beads. You could imagine making an entire quilt for your bed, right? Out of these beautiful little hexagons. Um, I certainly can imagine that. I would love to do that. So a flat net join is something that many people have done, but they haven't done it with hinges. And if you look carefully at our net, I've got hinges built in here, here, and here. And then the other hinges, which will end up going in the opposite direction, are here, here, and here. And two of them are yet to build. And I'll be showing you how to do that. But I'd like to show you something really simple. If you can just get one hexagon sewn together, one group of six triangles, and just pinch the two metal triangles together, you'll see that immediately it starts making itself into mirror tetrahedra. So just this one pinch right here is astonishing. This means that any, any hexagon, any sixagon, has the capability to instantly join itself through only one join into a set of mirror tetrahedra. And I'd like to point out that the tetrahedra is it's more of a concept piece here than a completion because this fourth face isn't in. But as you can see, the structure is stable without it, and so you can easily build a kaleidocycle without the fourth face. And the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to put this together with just the three faces. We're going to leave this guy off for now, and then make the open cycle so that you can enjoy seeing the different forms that are possible while these come together. So, let's get some of these things out of the way. Uh, I'd like to show you the jellyfish net briefly too, because some of you are interested in this form or you'd like to assemble your pieces and parts this way instead of in a little quilt net, and that's fine. This is uh, eight triangles sewn together, so for the total of 24 triangles, you'd have three jellyfish sections, and this is just a smaller one. You can make your triangle sides you know, eight beads, nine beads, 12 beads, whatever pleases you. More beads, more work. So this one's actually a little quicker to make. And this one actually has one of the tetrahedra sewn up and hinged. Um, actually, it needs a hinge on this side still. It's only got half a hinge there. But as you can see, this is really simple. It just basically folds itself up into a set of mirror tetrahedra, or if you fold one of them in the other direction, then you'll get a set of tetrahedra that has some mirror faces 
and then some faces that are not. So half of them will be the same and half of them will be different. For this project, we're wanting all of the faces to be the same. So if you're making a jellyfish net, before you close your tetrahedra, go ahead and check all four sides, just to make sure that you haven't accidentally folded up your second leg backwards and sewn it like that. Again, having said that, there's a lot of different cycles you can make. We're just doing this one right now mirror tetrahedra that are the same on all four faces. So, how to do this? Just lay out eight of your triangles in this little jellyfish configuration, and please note that any special corners, hot corners, like we're making these flower faces in our triangles, I call this inside here with the yellow that's to be the center of the flower, the hot corner of the triangle. And these corners always want to point at an angle when you lay out your triangles here. So you see hot corners are pointing up, down and to the left, down and to the right. And if you just follow that simple guideline, that'll ensure that your kaleidocycle functions properly. So again, this is very simple and it practically does it for you, right? So a set of mirror tetrahedra and this is the start of a machine. If you look carefully at one of these kaleidocycles, here's a beautiful one from Susanna Thompson, you'll see that these are made from three sets. See that three sets, one, two, three, of mirror tetrahedra. So each set of tetrahedra is a unit, but another thing that you'll notice, I'll just turn it for you another time or two, is that the sets change. Now it's these two, and these two, and these two that are together. Another thing that you'll notice that's interesting is the hot corners, the unique corners in the puzzle here. You here, see here the eyes are facing out. Well, if you turn it the other direction, the eyes will be facing inward. So this presents some interesting possibilities. If you were imagining this as a signal device, for example, and you called this connected, right? Whatever it is, electricity, water, there it is, all together right now. And then suddenly it's all on the outside ring. So you can imagine a lot of real world applications where having a simple cycling structure will allow you to either just move like to different places or move not like into different configurations to make a pattern. This one is this way at this rotation and it looks like this when it's rotated in the other direction. So you can see this is actually a very powerful idea for a morphing surface or a signaling device. So how do we get all these together, build in these beautiful hinges that allow it to operate properly? If you just make your cycle from a flat net and you don't put any hinges in it, as many of you have done, then you know what that's like. It's more like a soft kind of geometric hacky sack, right? This is the first one Susanna Thompson made, and it's delightful. She made it from size 10 delicas, and she made it, engineered it herself from a flat folding mat of 24 triangles. But because the triangles were just in the big origami folding net, you can see the net was just sewn together like a tube, which is ingenious, very clever, but it doesn't connect these elements down into flat hinges or even joins. And so the thing is beautiful, absolutely ingenious, but it's not a good engineering linkage because it doesn't have any hinges. And you do have a lot more wear on the thread and the beads when you don't have hinges. So our challenge was how to do this form, build in the hinges, right? But still have it be simple, not complicated, we started out talking about chains of tetrahedra and engineering linkages and math and, you know, some people's eyes glazed over. But in fact, this is a fabulous linkage, a chain of tetrahedra, and you can build a lot of things in the real world out of this too. Architecture, engineering, and chemistry use these tetrahedra chains, and you'll see molecules arranged and, you know, all sorts of structures in nature take advantage of this. So. Yes, it's a chain of mirror tetrahedra, but we can also just think of it like a quilt. So I think I've decided that that's actually the most enjoyable, joyful, and interesting way to think about these forms is what if we just think about making a quilt 
or making a fabric. This is an uh, ancient work. We know all about it. And in fact, what you need to know most about to do a good job here are sewing and tailoring techniques. So let's get started. In part two, I'm going to pick up a needle and thread and show you how to actually sew these triangles together.